Well, here we go. Let's see. Yep, we're live now. You see us live? You see us before I do? Awesome. Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Hey, friends, Lee Brown here in North Carolina, and I've got Bob Sori with me in Tennessee. And we're here to answer your questions about FHA mortgages, foreclosure, coronavirus, the things that you've been hearing about. Bob's been doing FHA and FHA foreclosures forever. And so he's got real answers for you from an actual realtor. So Bob, why don't you say, hey there, buddy. Hey, I'm in Lebanon, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. And we're going to explain what needs to be done about FHA mortgages. If you are... Uh, without a job right now, if you've been laid off, or if you're scared about being laid off, we're going to explain what you need to do and uh, tell you not to worry. Uh, I know that's a big thing right now. People are worried, but uh, if you have an FHA mortgage, um, you shouldn't be worried. There's a lot of things that are happening, and uh, uh, I'm going to explain why and uh, how to find out if you have one of those mortgages. That's a really great point because we know that a lot of people are very big experts on mortgage processes when they're buying their house. And then approximately one month later, the loan's been sold twice and they don't have the foggiest idea what they have. Cause you and I know we go to list a house and you ask the homeowner about their loan and they don't have any idea. They don't look at statements. They have it on auto draft and it's on autopilot. So we're going to help y'all get through this process. And by the way, if you're a realtor watching this, Feel free to share this with your clients and then remind them to always come back to you with their questions. Because if you are a realtor, this is a great reason to reach out to your past clients, unless you're in New York where you're under strict guidelines about unsolicited phone calls, know your laws right now under the state of emergency, friends. And if you are a normal part of the consumer public, reach out to your realtor to ask if your realtor is not around or is not educated on this. We will help you find somebody who can help you because that's what we're all doing right now. Realtors want to help. And I will tell you that I haven't met even one who is not willing to stop what they're doing at home in the middle of homeschooling and trying to do real estate remotely that won't help you figure things out. So Realtors, make sure that you're following for updates. We'll post some links here afterward to help out. So Bob, let's start with new loans because we do have people out there still buying real estate because interest rates are low. And of course, this is the traditional spring market and a lot of people were planning to buy a home this spring. So can you still get an FHA loan? There's a lot of rumors on the street that you can. Oh, there's a lot of people that are saying that you can't right now, but that's, that's just not right. And uh, everybody is saying, wait, you can, but, and then when the, they say, but they get quiet. Uh, the answer is you can get an FHA loan. Lenders are still lending money. And there are times that you just need to keep your mouth shut. And that's hard for some people to do. Um, on the uh, late last week, FHA came out and they said, and they do this by letters. They put out mortgage E letters. And it's basically an instruction to the lender on what needs to be done. And right now, there's a mortgagee letter out that says, unless the buyer tells you that they've been laid off in the last 10 days before closing, you don't have to go back and get a verification from their employer. So if um, they have been laid off and they don't tell the lender that they have been laid off, the lender does not have to go back and ask their employer for a verification so they can still close. So I'm not telling people that uh, should go out and uh, keep it to their self, but if they don't tell, they can still get their loan and close. Now, there are some things that are called overlays and FHA tells them uh, what their minimum requirement is to be able to get a loan. Uh, and then some lenders will go out and uh, raise those requirements. And sometimes it's because they have too much work. Other time it's because when they sell the loan, uh, the investor requires certain, certain, um, certain uh, levels uh, of, in, of um, credit uh, or locations uh, for it to, to be bought. Um, but right now you're seeing lots of different changes. Um, so uh, Lee, 
help me with this. Uh, so I'm just stumbling right now. Well, I mean, I mean, basically, y'all, if you need to get an FHA loan, call your lender. If your lender says, I ain't doing them, then call another lender. And by the way, any realtor worth their salt has at least three favorite lenders on their list because we want to give the consumer options every time. And some lenders like FHA paper more than others. That's just how life goes. So right. call a couple of different lenders. You all, you should do that anyway and compare your rates and fees and just have some conversations about it. And by the way, Y'all might not know this, but in the Great Recession, FHA loans defaulted at a lower rate than your regular conventional loans because the FHA program is designed to help you get in a house and stay in the house. That's the whole purpose of our beautiful program. And it's one of the things that realtors fight to protect on a regular basis because we do have a lot of elected officials in Washington, D.C. who think you should all have to have 20% down to buy a house because of times like this. They think if you have 20% in a house, you're less likely to default. We as realtors believe that a lot of people have fantastic credit, finances, and education, and they just don't have a heck ton of money, which is why FHA is important. So just do your research, know the paper, know the lender, and by the way, this is not the time to get a loan from some random website. Yeah. This is the time to get a lender where you can have a conversation and say, I heard this, I heard this, and they'll answer questions for you. Wouldn't you agree with now, that, Bob? Now, and, and again, now um, I'm going to step up and, and I'm going to step on some toes. Um, and we're good about that, aren't we, Lee? Um, I mean, that's our talent, frankly, Bob. We're very good at that. That's exactly what it is. Now, when you have an FHA loan, we pay upfront mortgage insurance and we also pay monthly mortgage insurance premiums. Now, when you get a, a call from your lender and says, hey, you've had this loan for a while now and I can save you money. When they do that, they're going to try to get rid of that monthly mortgage insurance. That's not what you want in all instances. If you're self-employed or you're in an industry like we have a situation with this just automatic stop, the world stops with this pandemic. Well, guess what happens? They have canceled your mortgage insurance and they have canceled what I have been able to do for the last 12 years and help people keep their homes. When they cancel and refinance you to save you that sometimes it's as less as little as seventy dollars a month, and they say, "Wait a second, I can save you a thousand dollars a year." They're telling you that they're gonna they're gonna stop what I and other real estate agents in this country can help you keep your house for, and they're gonna save you that money. But they're gonna also prevent the the program that FHA has put in place to keep you in your house. Now, we're gonna talk about here in a couple of minutes what FHA is doing and has done to keep you in your home. So when people talk about FHA is expensive, it is not expensive when it's gonna keep this roof over your head. So well, that's kind of like property management. I always tell somebody that if you're paying a monthly fee for a great tenant, it feels like you're spending way too much money. But the minute you have a terrible tenant, you're not paying nearly enough because sometimes y'all, what you're paying for is a situation like we're in now. And so Bob's right. You got to ask lots of questions. And unfortunately, for too many people, you're just, you're cruising too quickly. And we're learning right now at the stay at home world we're in, it's time to slow down. That means it's time to ask questions, which means let's shift over into the people with existing FHA mortgages. They've lost hours. They've been laid off from their jobs. They've had to take their companies and close them down temporarily because there's no revenue. What are they supposed to do next, Bob? What do we do? Oh my goodness. It's very simple. You pick up the phone and you call your existing mortgage company like an outbound call like you oh, call the number and hit dial that's exactly right you pick up the phone you call your existing mortgage company and you tell them i've been laid off and i need help what can you do for me and you know what well, they're gonna say know something here. They don't want you out of your house right now. The banks don't want your house. I don't care what fear monger you're reading online. 
They are not out going Whoa, uh, uh, like they're going to go foreclose on the world. That's not the goal right now. I think everybody for the first time in my life is rowing in the same direction, but you got to call and have the conversation because they don't know you're having income issues unless you tell them. They can't guess it. There's no telepathy going from us to the banks from home. Yeah. And, and, and they're going to be reasonable with you. And, and all you have to do is, is say, I'm having a problem and I need help with my mortgage. And sometimes they're going to be as simple as saying, all right, Mr. Smith, I just need to get a little bit of information from you. When was the last time that you worked? Do you expect to be able to go back to work? And is there anything else that you need from me? And they may call you back in a week or two and say, have you gone back to work? And if you tell them no, they're going to say, well, we're going to put you on a list. And when we call you back, we're going to verify with you information that only you will know. And they're going to give you your account number and they're not going to ask you for any money or anything else. And they potentially will send you a letter in the mail and ask you to fill out some information. That's it. And listen, guys, not the time to lie to them. If you haven't been laid off and you haven't had your hours reduced, please don't take advantage of the system. This is the time when we should be making sure those who need help get help because we don't want the banks going under. We don't want the Federal Housing Administration to have false guarantees out there because that hurts all of us in the future. So no false claims, but tell the truth, write down your account number. And Bob gives a fantastic piece of advice to everybody, which is write down every interaction you have with your bank. And I think, Bob, you've been doing this for over a decade now. If yeah. you called the bank, write down the, the day and time you called them, the name of the person with whom you spoke and what they told you and keep a running log. Y'all, this honestly should be basic advice every time you talk to a banker or an accountant or any kind of a professional, even your realtor so that you have a good paper log of what you were told at what time. Oh, she's locked up on us. Oh, did I lock up? Hmm. Oh yeah, you're back. Okay, well anyway, I was just saying this is good advice in any professional capacity, lawyers, attorneys, realtors, accountants, anytime you talk to somebody like this, keep a log of all your interactions because you may need it in the future. And I'll point one thing out to you here. We don't know what's gonna happen to your credit score right now. There is a giant push from the federal government that credit agencies not punish credit scores if somebody needs help right now. And we don't have answers on that yet. Mm -hmm. And understand, y'all, this is a very fluid situation. Bob and I can tell you we're getting information literally every day with updates, changes, and improvements. So you want to go ahead and be in the queue and keep your information so that you can be helped as quickly as possible. And by the way, if you're a realtor watching this, the letters that Bob mentions, these mortgagee letters from FHA, you can go to FHA.gov and sign That's up right. to receive the mortgagee letters. Now, full disclosure, they're boring and they're long and they're full of language you probably won't understand unless you've spent time in foreclosure world or mortgage world, but it's okay because you can kind of get the gist of it from the beginning. So go sign up for those and be the most educated realtor you can be. Now, jump over into... The, the third big point you wanted to make there, Bob, about investors getting their money, because we just mentioned we want banks to stay liquid. We do not want our banks to go under. And so what does this investor stuff mean? Well, uh, in, in one, of the, one of the things that I asked you before we, we came on the air live was, is did you watch 60 Minutes, not this last, last Sunday night, last night, but did you watch it the week before? Uh, I said no, because I don't watch that trash because they used to be news and they're not anymore. Right. So you said that I should go back and watch it because. Because there was an interview with a guy that was a rocket scientist. And uh, I've got a friend in, in Arizona and she is a realtor, was before, very smart. And um, rocket scientists typically know a lot of smart things to say. Well, he was talking about as the federal oh, internet. Uh, to on who they helped. Well, 
Oh, you're back. Uh, but uh, it's a great uh, a, it's a great ability for um, the help that's going to come. But when you have an FHA mortgage, the one of the options is a partial claim. So if you go behind and get a forbearance, you skip several payments. A partial claim comes out where HUD comes in and actually pays the investor several of your mortgage payments and they're added on to the end of your mortgage. You actually go back and sign a, a second deed of trust. It's recorded and it's the last payment you pay when you sell your house or you pay it off completely. So that's the important piece here that nobody's thinking about. HUD with FHA loans has already figured it out. The other mortgages, I, I don't know the answers because I'm not an expert in those. I haven't sat and read all thousands and thousands of pages on what happens with VA loans. I know a little bit about those. I help people with those too. But with Fannie, Freddie, I don't know anything about those loans. So, so but the, these though, y'all, this paid. is the question to ask. Ask your bank this question because we've already had clients who have spoken to a couple of large banks and I believe they are currently amending their processes. So I'm not going to call them out right now. But what they had been telling our clients was you can have 90 days forbearance if you can demonstrate loss of income because of coronavirus. So basically 90 days off of mortgage notes, but right. it was going to be due at the end of that 90 days in a balloon payment. Yep. And it's not really rocket science to figure out that if somebody's out of work for three months, they ain't going to have a balloon payment at 90 days. So if you call your bank, you need to ask what happens to the forbearance period. Is it what Bob is describing with FHA, which is what makes sense? And I think anybody I know says, of course, tack it on to the end of my loan 28 years from now. I'll handle it. Give me a moment here to manage the pandemic. But if you've called a regular loan, a Fannie or Freddie or conventional loan, ask what happens at the end of forbearance. Does it tack to the end or is it a balloon? You have to ask this question. FHA figured it out. So again, yeah. another extra point for FHA and their plan to keep it's, you in your home. Yeah, FHA, it's called a partial claim. Now, with FHA, you can't go and say, this is what I want done they actually put you through what is called a waterfall. Now, when you call and you say, I need help, they're going to tell you, we're going to put you in a forbearance to start. And they might not use those words because remember, at every servicer in the mortgage company is called a servicer. All right. They have all these fancy words. They're a servicer. They're going to say, we're going to take care of it. And they're going to put you through a waterfall and the person now on the phone may not even know that it's a waterfall, but the first step is, is the forbearance. And then there's four more steps and three of them keep you in your home. But if after months and months, uh, you don't go back to work, they are going to put you through the fourth and the fifth step. The fourth step is a short sale and you still get to live in your home while you are forced to sell it. But remember, there are three steps that help you keep your home. And then the fifth step is uh, a potential deed in lieu of foreclosure, or they do actually sell it. But I promise you, there are options to help you keep the house. And I've been very successful in preventing all of these foreclosure sales and was recognized for it in 2012 at the national level. And that was one of those things that I didn't want to be recognized for it. I wanted more help to prevent foreclosures. So um, I can tell you that was, that was the, the, uh, the surprise of my life. But at the same time, uh, it was hard to swallow. And I didn't understand why I was being recognized when I just wanted more help to, to help more people. So um, bottom line is, is that FHA doesn't want your house back and they're not, they're not anything but a big insurance company and the banks don't want it. The banks don't make money off of doing this. They, they just get paid by HUD little bitty pieces. And after, after they get paid this money, they, they don't get 
more money for selling the house, even if the house went up. They just get, you know, a little few dollars for sending somebody to drive by and see if you're still living in it. And that's one of the biggest things that I can tell you is, is don't be scared and move out in the middle of the night. Because if you move out in the middle of the night because you're scared, I can't do anything to help you keep the house. Exactly. And by the way, you mentioned Deed and Lou really briefly kind of fly by. Can you explain that so that realtors know how to explain it to their clients and their clients know what it means? Because we have a population of realtors sure. who helped with short sales during the last recessionary period, but we know that the banks are more in favor of Deed and Lou now. Can you give a brief nutshell example of what it means? Sure. Deed and Lou foreclosure for FHA loans is very different than any of the other loans. You have to go through all three phases of being able to keep your home before they'll even consider a deed in lieu of foreclosure. So you have to be able to say that I've stayed in my home, I've not moved out of it, I've processed all of the options to keep my home, I've communicated with the mortgage company in all instances, I've answered the phone when they've called. I've given them all of the paperwork. I tried uh, to modify my loan, but I've not been able to get a job back. Or if I did get a job back, it didn't pay enough for me to be able to qualify to keep the loan. And now I don't have any second mortgages. I didn't get a heat and air unit from my, from my electric company, or I didn't get a down payment assistance, or if I did, they weren't willing to, to sign off so that I could sign my house over. And if I am able to do and to get those signed over, and I agree to sign my house over in a deed in lieu of foreclosure, I can also get $3,000 to help me move and start over again. And that is a huge, huge amount of money when somebody has to move. And that's, a, that's an amazing, amazing day when I would get to hand somebody a check for $3,000. So there's so if many. they followed all the rules, because oh. you have to follow all the rules to get that money, y'all. And you yeah. should know that in realtor world, that's often referred to as cash for keys and you get the cash when you followed all of the guidelines and it's for whatever reason, not gonna be a house you can keep. That's at the end of this waterfall process. I love that word. So at the end of the waterfall, if things yeah. aren't going your way, but remember, we can't stress it enough in this current situation, in this pandemic, taking your house back is not FHA's goal. This is not HUD's goal. And by the way, when we say HUD, it's housing and urban development. We say HUD a lot and people think negative, nasty terms. It's just a federal department and they're well, there to help right now. Well, I, I just got corrected. Deed in lieu is only $2,000 and a pre-foreclosure sale is $3,000. So I, I just- Okay, thank you for the correction from all your resource. Yep, yep, I just got corrected. So uh, I'm glad for that correction that I can, that I can put it out there. So. Because, Hey, I mean, we all get things right and wrong. And our goal here right. is just to help you guys with some information right now, because there's a lot of bad information out there. So what we want you to take away from this is a, you can still get an FHA loan if you're purchasing mm -hmm. and yes, interview lenders B there's help if you've lost money and you've lost income, but you have to do what, Bob, what do they have to do? You've got to communicate with your lender. Pick up the phone and you have to call your mortgage company. If you don't call the mortgage company, the first thing they're going to do is report you late to your credit, to your credit bureau. And that, you know, and I tell people, I'm like, look, you can go to, to Christmas dinner, Thanksgiving dinner, and, and everybody wants to talk about their credit report. No, you're not going to sit at Christmas dinner and talk about your credit report. You want to talk about at least we hope not I don't, I don't want to come to christmas dinner if that's what we're talking about i'm not coming oh, are you coming you want to talk about you're building a house you're buying a house but the thing that people are most embarrassed about at christmas dinner is their credit report they're they, you know do things that are going to be fun and good 
call the mortgage company so that you can talk about that is everything this? is good at Christmas dinner, my house, everything. So pick up the phone, call the mortgage company. And bottom line is, is, is make everything, make everything that is just so great. So, um, and I will tell you guys, because we are seeing proactive legislation and proactive help from the housing agencies right now, it's a really good time to reach out to your congressman or woman and your senator and thank them for moving more quickly than we are tend than we usually see because they're actually understanding the situation. And so now is not the time for being ugly and casting blame. It's a time for asking questions and saying thank you. And by the way, tune back in for more updates. If you're a realtor, sign up for the mortgagee letters. And when it comes to credit scores, keep asking the question if they are going to give a little grace if somebody's late, because we're really hoping not to see an entire swath of Americans with credit scores that are hammered due to something completely out of everybody's control. Hey, Bob, thank you for bringing FHA information here. Where can people reach you if they have additional questions or need some guidance? Well, I, I, I want to do one other thing real quick. Remember how I said I wanted to get some fears gone? A couple things on that real quick. Um, the reason that, that FHA put out a mortgage letter about 60 days on no, no foreclosure filings is because we're in the middle of this epidemic, all right, in this pandemic, whatever we want to call it. They're trying to put out information with these mortgagee letters to say, we don't want anything done yet because we may change the rules, we may do things because we can't have all of these changes in all of these houses because what are we gonna do with them? If you've looked at rental cars in Hawaii, they have parked them all over the place in stadium lots. They can't, they can't do the same thing with houses. They want everybody to keep their homes. Yes. Homes are so important. So think about what I talked about with the deed in lieu. You have to actually go through a short sale process before you're even eligible to do a deed in lieu and to get that money to help you move. And that short sale process can be up to 120 days that you live there and you're not paying your house note then either. So you've got 60 days plus a potential additional 120 days. So an FHA loan, you have really got a bargain for that insurance that you've paid for. So don't let anybody talk you out of refinancing when you've done something that was really a great bargain when you bought your home as a first time home buyer or re-entered the market with that loan. So it's a perfect loan to buy a house with. So if you can, and if you need it, perfect, perfect type of a loan. Um, how can you get in touch with me? My email is, is real easy. Uh, if you just want some questions answered, uh, bob at bobsorry.com and you spell my last name S-O-R-E-Y. And if you're having problems, um, if you're having problems with a bank uh, that is not doing well and they're trying to give you a hassle or trying to foreclose on you, um, don't laugh just yet, but that email address is research at banks with an S dot exposed research at banks.exposed and I will go out and make an example out of them. So, um, and I'll help you keep your house. Done that for a time. We're alone together right now. We're in this together. Let's help each other make it through. It's a lot you can do from home, but most importantly, look after yourselves, make your phone calls, keep your record of information and reach out to your local realtor who helped you with your house and they can help you with more information if you need it. Bob, thank you for coming on yeah. the call with me today and for always being willing to help people stay in their houses because that's who we are. <laughs>